This course will increase your knowledge of JavaScript, Node.js, APIs, React, databases, and more. Anya Kubo is your instructor. She'll show you how to build the same project using three different methods. And this will help you gain a deeper understanding of each method. Hey everyone, and welcome to this compilation video, which we're going to build the same thing, but three times. So we're actually going to build this flight widget. We're going to start off super easy. We're going to start off building this in vanilla JavaScript. So if you're a beginner, this is the perfect one for you. Okay, we're going to build the widget and then we're going to display data onto it, onto these flipping little cards right here and get new data every so often. Next up, I'm going to show you how to essentially build this by using an API. I'm actually going to build it in JavaScript for the front end and show you how to build a Node.js backend in order to get data from the API that we're going to use. Okay, so this one right here, this is real data. This is the real stuff. And finally, I'm going to show you how to build the same thing, but using React this time. I'm going to show you how to use React for the front end and then a database with our own data. So pretending we're the airport and we're updating this data. I'm going to show you how to get that data again by building a Node.js backend and using this free database. So you don't need any credit cards or anything like that. So I'm excited. Let's do it. Okay, so let's get to building our super vanilla flight widget. So no APIs for this one. This is going to be super vanilla JavaScript for those of you learning JavaScript. However, if you do want to learn how to do it with an API, please do check out the link in my description below where we're going to do the same project, however, using an API. So it's either project for whatever level you feel comfortable with. Let's do it. So first off, I am using WebStorm. So this means I can just open up my WebStorm and create a new project. And I'm just going to choose to call this Flight Widget Vanilla JavaScript. And then click Create. OK, so there we go. You will see a directory has been created for me. And all I'm going to do is create a new file, an HTML file, which is going to be an index HTML file. Just choose HTML5 right here. Or if you're not using WebStorm, you might need to type .html to give your file the HTML extension so that your code editor knows to treat it like an HTML file. So there we go. There's my HTML file with the boilerplate. Thank you, WebStorm. And I'm just going to call this flight widget, just like so. The next thing we need to do is create an app.js file and a style sheet. So styles CSS. Uh, once again, I'm just going to choose to select the .css file. So if you haven't got WebStorm, make sure to put .css to make sure that your code editor treats this as a CSS file. And once again, I'm just going to create a JavaScript file and call this app. And once again, make sure to have the .js extension if you are not using WebStorm. OK, great. So now, first things first, let's go ahead and connect our style sheet using the link tag. It's a self-closing tag. And all I'm going to do is make sure that this is going to the path of where we keep our style sheet as it's in the root of our project along with our index HTML file. So the same location, I could just type in the file name like so. We don't need to go into any directories or anything like that. And once again, I'm going to use the script tag like this and use source in order to get our app.js file. So again, the same way that we went and got our CSS file, we're just typing in the file name as it's in the same level, it's in the same directory. So we don't need to go finding it in different folders. It's just there. So we use the file name. Great. Now this is a JavaScript tutorial, so we're going to be writing very limited HTML on purpose for this. So the only HTML I'm really going to have is a div. That's going to, I'm going to give this the class of departures so that we can see it and we can style it up a little bit. And I'm actually going to have, let's just have a header. Why not? Like so. And then I'm going to have a table. Now my table, well, I'm going to hard code the head of the table. So if you haven't used tables before, you have the table tags that take another tag called T 
head for the header and then T body. These are optional. I like to keep my header and my body of the table separate, especially for this tutorial. It will really help us out a lot. This is because I'm going to give the T body an ID of table body so that we can pick this out and then inject table rows into here using JavaScript. So like I said, I'm going to hard code the header, the table header, but this is all going to have injected JavaScript. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really exciting. Let's do it. So here is the syntax for a uh, table. You have the table row. So you have two table row tags like that. And then the table row is going to, well, as this is the table uh, header, I'm going to use TH, but these will have TD. So the first uh, table header is going to say time. And then I'm actually going to pick this out as well. So I'm going to give this the idea of time because we're going to want to give this some custom styling later. Uh, as well as other things. This is going to be destination, destination. Uh, and then we have th, we're going to have flight. Then we're also going to have the gate of the flight. And then let's also have the remarks. So once again, let's give all of these an ID. So this will be destination unknown, known. destination. And then we're going to have ID of flight. And then we're going to have ID of gate. And this one's going to be ID of remarks. Okay, so that's hard coded. And all of this we're going to be injecting with JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do that by picking out this table body element by the ID. So in here, I'm going to use document, get element by ID. And look for the table body. Just like so. Okay, so once we have that, I'm going to actually save it as const table body so that we can work with it easier in our JavaScript and just get rid of that. Great. So the first thing first, as we are just, you know, this is just for fun. I'm just going to use an array of data for this. So uh, let flights, I'm using let for a reason, which will become more apparent later as this, we will want to change this. So each of my flights is essentially going to be represented by an object and that is going to have a time. So here is my first flight it's going off at 8, 11 a.m. Its destination is going to be uh, Oman. The flight number is going to be OX203. The gate number is going to be a01 and the remarks is going to be that it's on time okay so there is one i'm not gonna uh just sit here <laughs> allow you to watch me type these out i have pre-made this so here are all my flights we have oman we've got a flight to london that's been cancelled dubai frankfurt and tokyo Okay, so those are my flights I have or I will be putting the code in the description of this video if you want to take that or if you want to, you know, take this video and just pause it while you write this down. It's totally up to you, whichever version you prefer. But yes, I will be sharing the final code with you in the description below. Okay, so those are all our flights. This is what we're going to be using in order to create our flights widget. So in order to populate our widget with this information, I'm going to write a function called populate table, just like so. And we're going to be using uh, for loops to do this. And I'm going to say that for, so obviously this is called flights. I want to loop for as many flights as we have. So again, this is one flight, this is one flight, we have one, two, three, four, five. This is going to look five times. And we can do so with this syntax. So flights is the name of our 
array const flight of flights. So we've now defined that one of these is a flight. And all I'm going to do is for each flight, I'm going to use document to create an element and that element is going to be a table row. So once we have done that, let's actually save this as const table row. Great. So as it stands for each of these, we have created a table row. So just like we see here, a table row. The next thing we need to do is actually create a table or a TD to, to hold all of this information. So for each one of these lines, we need to create a TD element, right? So let's do that document create element td and i'm going to save this as const so let's do that so we've done that uh and the next thing we need to do well actually let's put this into our table body first so i'm going to get the table body and use append to append the table row into our table body. So each time this loop is gonna go into the table body, put in a table row, put in a table row, do that five times, okay? So that is being put in. However, before we put that in, we want to create the five uh, TD elements. So let's make another loop for this. For this time, we're gonna look in here. So we're gonna look in the flight, look in the flight because we're working with objects this time and we're going to get the flight detail so we are saying let's define each of these lines or sorry to be more precise each of these as a flight detail okay so all i'm going to do now is use document create element td and then const table cell that's what i'm going to call it so we're creating a table cell and now what we want to do is essentially well we can i'm just going to console log for you what this looks like console log the flight detail and of course we need to call this function now let's look in here. I can just use this button because we are using WebStorm. Or for those of you not using WebStorm, you just need to get the absolute path. So I'm going to copy the path, the absolute path, and then in the browser, I'm just going to paste it in like so. It's the same thing. And now if we inspect the page, you will see here's our body. There's the div that we made called departures. There's our hard-coded header, and there's the body. And we have injected five table rows, as we said, Okay, five table rows. And the next thing we said we want to do is put in the table data, right? And that table data based on the flight details. So as you will see here, the flight details that are just the, essentially the keys, we want the values. So flight gate remarks. So if I was just to use the flight detail, for example, if I get the table cell, in a text flight detail and then of course we need to actually get the table cell and put it in the table row so table row append child or append whichever one you want table cell it would just look like this we don't want that we actually want to get the value so we do so by doing by getting the object and then opening up the array and finding it based on the flight detail. So we're looking in here, I'm going, our oh, destination, and that will return the value. Just do this instead, okay? So that will give us the actual flight details. Cool. So you think this is pretty much it, right? Well, wrong. Because this is at the moment just all one word, I don't want that. I actually wanna split out each letter so that we can flip each one and I want to put each one onto a div essentially. So that's the next thing that we are going to do. So to do this, I essentially need to make an array of all the uh, letters. 
So instead of doing this here, let's get the word and I'm going to use array from this essentially. So we don't need this anymore. So we're getting the word, but obviously the words all like split up into um, an array. It's an array of all the letters. And now for each letter, so again, we're going to use for const uh, letter of word this time. Um, we're going to create an element and it's going to be a div. However, yeah, that's fine. We're going to create a div and then let's save this as letter element. So we've got our letter element and then we're going to just get the letter element uh, class list add. We're going to add the class of flip and then the letter element text content is just going to be letter, right? So now if we look in here, uh, we of course need to put that in because we haven't done that yet. We're going to get the table cell append letter element. Cool. So it looks like this. It looks a bit like matrix. So let's do some styling up. So what do we want uh, to do? So let's go to our star sheet up. Now I'm going to use a Google font for this. The font is uh, condensed Ubuntu. So I'm just going to get rid of that Ubuntu. Ubuntu, sorry, Ubuntu. Ubuntu condensed. And I'm just going to select, well, there's actually only one. So that's easy. I'm going to use this version to import it into the style sheet directly, not into my HTML. But you can, of course, choose to do whatever you wish. Now, for all everything in here, I'm going to choose the font family Ubuntu. So this one. And as a backup, sans serif. So I'm just going to paste that in here like so. I'm going to say that all the text I want to be like an off-white. So I'm going to do that now. And the font size is going to be, font size, sorry, it's going to be 35 pixels. Okay, and then the body of the whole app itself. Well, I just want to center everything. So I'm going to use display flex. So I'm initializing flex box and then I'm justifying content center. So you can't use this line without initializing flex box. Just be aware of that. I'm going to give a height to the body because I then also want to align items center and you can't do this without giving it a height. So just keep that in mind and let's make the background color. Um, I'm going to do 251199127. Great. And now the header. We did have a header. So I'm just going to give that some padding of 10 pixels. And then we also named the div that holds everything. We gave it the class, so dot for class of departures, right? So dot class of departures. And I'm going to give this a background color of RGB 666. Uh, and let's round it off because I do like a border radius to make it seem kind of like softer, I guess, border radius, 10 pixels, and then padding, 10 pixels. And then we could add some box shadow later, but I'm not going to do that now. Let's also get the departures uh, and say that any table that exists in the div with the class of departures, is going to have a background color of RGB 46, 46, 46. And I'm going to do text align left. So let's see what this looks like so far. Okay, so we've done that. We just need to go into the TD and make sure that everything's kind of aligned next to each other as well. So I think that's because of the TD or it could be done on the div. Okay, so I'm going to say that any TD element that lives in the table that also lives in the div with a class of departures dot for class is going to have a border 
solid four pixels RGB. So this is each cell, right? Uh, and let's give it a background color of black. Actually, we should be doing this on the divs themselves. So on each of this div, I want to make sure that each div is kind of like a black or has a little border square. So obviously that looks really weird at the moment. And this should be black, sorry. Let's make it black. And let's make them all float left. Okay, there we go. So that's a lot better. Oof, that is looking so, so good. I'm also going to actually assign this a height just in case you know there isn't something there. I don't want it to kind of look weird. So I'm just going to hard code that there. And I'm also going to do the same for the actual uh, whole cell that this lives in. So a TD, so like one of these TD cell, right? So let's hard code that too. So every TD is going to have a height of 50 pixels no matter what. Cool. So great. And now one last thing I'm going to do is actually pick out. So in here, I'm going to pick each of these out by its ID and then just space them out a little bit more because I think they're a little bit too close together. So the hash is for ID. So ID of time is going to have a hard coded width of 160 pixels no matter what. And then uh, destination and also going to have a hard coded width of 260 pixels no matter what and then we also have the flight just going to have a width of 205 pixels and then the gate which is going to have a width of 135 pixels and then I think we have one more remarks Remarks, which is going to have a width of 260 pixels. Okay, so now that just looks a little bit better, I believe. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I think it's just a little bit spaced out a little bit nicer. Wonderful. So the next thing I want to do is just add a flip animation. So we've already added the class of flip to each of these divs that hold a letter each of our word. So now let's get the class dot for class of flip. And I'm going to add an animation to it. The animation is going to last for 0 0.5 seconds. It's going to be a linear animation linear and the animation we're going to call flipping. So we have chosen call it this and now frames flipping we have to define it so I'm just going to say that a zero percent uh, I'm going to transform it so that it rotates on the X oops rotate X uh, it's going to start at zero degrees and then we're going to do at 50, it's going to be 90 degrees on the X axis. And then at 100, it's going to go back to zero. Great. So that this means if I now refresh this, woo, the flipping. However, I want it to look more like, you know, it's going, which means we need to put on a set timeout. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So when we add the class of flip for each letter, so for each of these, I want this one to start first and then after a certain amount of time, this one. So basically, essentially, let's say if I want this one to be at 100 milliseconds, then this one to be at 200 milliseconds and this one to start at 300 and then this one at 400 milliseconds or just however many letters we have, right? We need a loop for this. So in here, I'm going to uh, well, put a set timeout to start a kind of loop in a way because this set timeout well first off it's going to go after 100 milliseconds but then I'm going to multiply it by 
either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, whichever index of this we are on, whichever index of the loop we are on. And this is kind of tricky to do with a for const of, but you can do it. It's actually why I turn this into an array because you can't do this on an object. Uh, if this is an array, we can get the two, uh, the entries method and use it on here, which means we can now add an index to this and we can access the index of the loop. Okay, so that's how I did that. That's a little bit of advanced JavaScript hacking, I guess. I don't know if it's a hack for you. So now we've got a set timeout that will uh, essentially execute on zero, then 100, then 200, 300 milliseconds. And all I want to essentially do is add the class of flip after that amount of time, and then add the letter and then put it in the cell. Okay, so that's all I am doing. I don't know why it's not like what's happening here. Oh, comma. Great. So now maybe let's actually put this all together so it's a little bit easier to read. This is my populate table function. So now it looks like this. Whee! So this is looking great, really. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do one more thing just for fun, and that is delete the first line and add a new random line with a time that is essentially going up. And if it gets close to midnight, then the time resets. So it looks like it's going on forever and ever and ever without you having to do anything or add new data because we're going to use some two arrays to either pick out the destination or the remark. And this we're going to generate with random letters or numbers. And this we're going to increment with time. Okay, so let's do it so const destination like i said this is just for fun right what can our destinations be we can have tokyo we can have frankfurt we can have dubai we can have london let's also have oman and let's have beirut see the destinations and then let's also have remarks. So we'll only have three remarks possible uh, on time, delayed, and cancelled. Great. And then let's start with the hour being uh, 15, just because we're on the 15th hour here last. Okay. So now let's write a function called, let's make some space. Um, function shuffle up, shuffle up. And what do we want to happen? Well, we're going to get the flight array and we're going to get rid of the first one using the JavaScript method of shift. So that will re re literally get rid of this first item in the array. And then to add a new item, we're going to get the flights array and we're going to use push. We're going to push in something to the end of the array. So what we're going to push in is an object. So hence I have this and the destination. Well, let's actually have the same structure as we have here. So here's our object and I'm going to push in a time, um, which I'm going to write actually a function called generate time to do this destination. Well, that's just going to be I'm going to go into the destinations array. I just wrote and pass through. So destinations array, we're going to open up our array, and we're going to pass through a random number based on the array length. So we can do so easily, I can get the destinations length, and I can multiply it by math random. And that will give me a random number anywhere from zero to des destinations, destinations anywhere to just under the length, but then I need to, sorry, yeah, just under the length. So for example, if there's nine things, right, it will come back with 8.9. But of course, there's no such thing as index 8.9. We have to round it down to index eight to get to the ninth item. So that's why I need to round it down using math floor. 
just like so. The next thing we need to do is, um, well, we can do actually the same for remarks. So go into the remarks and then, thank you very much, uh, get the remarks length multiplied by math random and just pass through math floor to round it down. And that will return a remark from the remarks array. The next thing we need to do is actually write a function called generate random letter, okay? And this is going to generate a random letter for us that will help us write our flight and gate randomly. So to generate a random letter, I'm going to say, well, first we need the alphabet, right? We need to actually choose uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, M. Okay, so there we go. Thank you. But I'm going to get rid of these. We just want capitals. So there's my array, and I'm just going to return a letter randomly. So I'm going to get alphabet uh, char at, and then instead of at zero, I'm going to pause through once again. I'm going to get the alphabet. length I'm going to multiply it by math random and I'm going to pass it through math floor so that it returns back a random character from the string okay but only based on you know however long this is you don't want to be picking out something here when that nothing exists right it'll throw out errors so that's how we generate a random letter, which means we can now use it for here. So for example, generate random letter, and then we're going to generate a random number plus again, generate a random number with a space in between. So let's just add a space like so. And of course we need to write the function generate random number. So function generate random number this time it's going to be exactly the same as we did up here so i'm literally going to copy this but this time we're going to choose zero one two three four five six seven eight nine which means that we're going to return and let's call this numbers we're going to return numbers based on the numbers string length great so that's how we would generate a random number. So let's replace this. So for a flight, we're going to generate a random letter plus another random letter plus maybe an empty string and then some numbers, right? So maybe let's have two numbers. Again, it's up to you. Whatever you want. Wonderful. And now one last one, we're going to write a function to generate time this isn't so much random so i've left out the random because we're going to use the current time in order to uh or the current hour in order to make sure that the hours are increasing so i'm going to get the hour well first off i'm going to use let display hour i'm going to assign the value of hour to it which we have assigned as 15 above here 15 just because we're on the 15th hour here so once we have that if uh, the hour is smaller than 24, well, then that's fine. We just want to increase one to the hour, right? Uh, then if hour is then suddenly larger than or equal to 24, well, then we want the hour to go back to being hour one. And then we can show that the display hour is the hour, right? Okay, and if hour is smaller than 10, well, the display hour is gonna, we're gonna add a zero to it and the hour because we don't want it to be one, we just want it to be zero one or zero two zero, or zero nine. So that is some logic that we have to do before we can return the display hour plus the string of this. And then we can just use generate random number plus generate random number. Uh, we don't need this. However, the second number can only be max up to five, right? So maybe if we pass through a max number into the generate number function, so max number, we can say that if a max number exists, well then, 
I'm going to get the numbers. I'm going to slice zero by max number and make a new array. So const new numbers. And that's what I want to return, but only if there's a max number. So return this by the new numbers length. Okay. So this is looking good and the shuffle up. How often do we want this to happen? So we want to get rid of the first one. We want to add something else to the array, which is going to be our new object. Um, and then we want to essentially redraw the table, but the table body, we want to clear it, right? If anything that's in there at the moment, otherwise we'll just keep adding more items to it. So I'm going to go text content, nothing. And then I'm going to call the populate table function again. So now let's put this on a set interval because I want the shuffle up to run. I want shuffle up to run every 200, sorry, 2000 milliseconds or every two seconds. So let's check it out. So there's one, two, Oman should disappear. Oh, we're getting some errors. Max number, oops. This should be new numbers, sorry. New numbers, because we just made a new array. Okay, so Oman should disappear. London appears, Beirut's been generated, Frankfurt's been generated, London's been generated. And you will see the time is going up by the hour. Let's just check it goes up to, well, um, just as long as it stays under 24, we're fine. Okay, so it's actually stopping at 23. I mean, I'm cool with that. Maybe that makes our lives easier. And this number's not going above five either. I wonder if it can be five or if we need to change that. Because five should technically be allowed. I don't see a problem with that. Oh, we've had an error here already. Okay. So this is looking good, however, we just need to maybe make this smaller than, and then max number, slice it at max number plus one, just so it includes the five. And let's check it out. So now, we should see it. We should see five showing up in here. Five, there's a five. And it should go up to 23, but not go over. Oh no. This is going above 24. Okay, smaller than or equal to, equal to 24. And great, so it's resetting. Let's just leave it as this. I'm happy with that. Again, this is just for fun, remember? So I hope you're enjoying this. You can have, have your very own, I'm just gonna slow this down a little bit as it is very fast. You can have your own departures table just like so okay great so i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial um please feel free to mess around with this as much as you like uh take it it's yours and if you want to see how to incorporate actual data not just made up data that we're generating randomly then please do watch my tutorial on this in the description below thanks very much and i'll see you on my channel Okay, so let's do this. Let's start off on the Rapid API Hub where I'm going to get my Flight API. So please go ahead and sign up as I've already signed up. I'm going to log in and I can do so with my Google account. So that's what I'm just going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and log in with Google. Of course, you don't have to. That is just my choice. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do is do a little bit of configuration, which I've done, but I'm going to walk you through it in order to use the API. And that API that we're going to use, there's actually loads of flight APIs. There's, in fact, just so many APIs in general. But the one that we're going to use is of a specific airport. We can use, we could do Madrid's airport to find out what kind of arrivals and destinations they have or we can do Toronto. So it's totally up to you for this tutorial though, I am going to go with Toronto's airport. And this is cool, like with every API on Rapid API, 
just going to show you it here. You get a little dashboard like this and you get the code. So you get the code required in order to, for example, here I can search an endpoint. We're going to want to get the departures by get all departures. So if I click on get all departures from Pearson Airport, this is the code that I would need to put in my Node.js backend in order to get the departure details. And if we want to see the example response without signing up, we could just see what this will come back as. You can see it comes back as an array of objects and each object represents a departure. Okay, with the terminal, the gate, the time is departing, the airline flight number, destination and status as well. So this is what it would look like if I ran this code. And the best thing about this is that, you know, we can just use one API key, one API key to control them all in the, the Rapid API Hub. So that is pretty cool. So I'm going to show you how to essentially subscribe to this. You're going to have to put in some details like your billing details and so on. Now, most of these APIs are free. Some will charge you, but this one only charge you, charges you if you go over 5,000 requests per day, I think, which we're not going to go over. Don't worry. So just go ahead and under my apps, you'll go to the developer dashboard. And here is where you're gonna have to put in your billing information. So under billing information, you'll see I've already done this. Please go ahead and add that here, add your billing information, save it. And then we can go back to the API. Of course, you can do a bunch of other things in here too. You can also make your own API, but we're not gonna do that. Once you put in your billing information, please go back to the Toronto Pearson API and we're just going to test the endpoint. So as we said, the endpoint we want is to get all departures. And then this is the code we're going to need with one API that controls them all. So that is my X rapid API key. I'm going to test the endpoint. And great. So that is what we're getting back. These are the current departures at Pearson Airport is pretty cool. Now I'm just going to actually take this code snippet. There is of course all these other languages but we are using Node.js for this tutorial so I'm just going to copy this. So first off we need to actually create a project. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is get up my web store. Please feel free to use whatever code editor you wish. Web store is just my choice of code editor or technically IDE that I'm going to use for this tutorial. Now in here, what I'm going to do is just create a new project. So this is going to have, let's have the front end just in plain old vanilla JavaScript because I have made this project before in plain old vanilla JavaScript. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to essentially make a backend for it in order to get data from Rapid API. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. Let's call this flight with jet live. And let's just go ahead and click create. And that will be created in my WebStorm directory, okay, where I store all my other projects. Please feel free to create a directory in whatever directory you wish. So once that is done, we're just gonna have to create some new files. So we know that we're gonna have an HTML file. I'm gonna call this index.html. So there we go. We also need a style sheet. I'm gonna call this styles. And I'm going to, you can either write CSS, but in WebStorm, I can just say that this is a CSS file and that extension will be added for me. And finally, we also need some JavaScript. So let's go ahead and put in a JavaScript file. So we've got an index.html style sheet and app.js file. Great. Now let's go ahead and put in some code into the index.html page to get started. So let's just go ahead and put in the title for this first. So there we go, flight widget. So we're gonna have to do a few things here. We're gonna have to link this up. So we're gonna use the link tag and we're just going to put, let's make this a little bigger so everyone can see. Style sheet. And then we are going to add the href to the styles CSS file. Okay, it's in the root, so that's all we have to do. 
Next, let's also put the script tag in. So we're going to put a script tag in so that we can essentially connect this app.js file to here. So we're going to read everything about the body, and then we're going to read this, which will take us to the app.js file, and then read all the JavaScript. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create our table. This can be static. I'm not going to be changing anything with JavaScript here, which is why I'm just going to make it in the HTML file. Let's actually just style this out a little bit more. So just have the correct indentations. So, yep. OK, so now in this div, this div, I'm just going to give this the class of departures as it's going to hold all our departures. And we're going to make a table now. Uh, so let's use table. And then in our table, well, of course, we're going to have a table head. So this is going to give semantic meaning to our browsers that this is the table head and then this is the table body. And in the table head, I'm going to well, yes, we can actually hard code this. It's the table body that we're going to want to insert stuff into with JavaScript. So how do we make a header again? Well, we need a row. So let's create a row. And in the row, we're going to have table header elements. And we're going to have to have uh, five for the time, destination, flight, gate, and remarks. But then also one spare one, because I want to put in a, like a little icon on the left. So of a little airplane. So we're going to have to leave space for that. So let's make five, sorry, six in total, that is. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the first one's going to be blank. This one is going to be time. This one is going to be destination. Oh, no, no, no. Flight. And then we have the gate. And then we also have the remarks. OK. So there we go. And perhaps let's give these an ID so we can pick them out later in our styling. OK. Oops, that should be ID time. This one is ID destination. This one's going to be ID of flight. And then, of course, we have the, well, you guessed it, gate and the remarks for saying like if it's delayed or cancelled and, and so on. So that's our header. And like we said, we're going to inject stuff into the body using JavaScript. So we could just pick out the T body tag or, you know, we really should pick it up by the ID. So I'm going to give this the ID of table body. Wonderful. And then also let's give this a header. So we're going to use the H1 tag for this and let's put departures. So a heading, sorry, I've got a heading. There we go. So at the moment, if we open this up, so I can use this shortcut right here to open it up for me. Thank you so much, WebStorm. That's all you'll see. And if we inspect the page, get up our console logs. And if we inspect the page, maybe just make this a little bit smaller you will see that in the body, we have a div we made with a class of departures. We've got H1 element, and then we've got a table with the table head and the table body. So basically everything we've just added. Great. Now, before we get to the JavaScript, just going to start this up, do some very basic styling so that we have a little bit uh, more of a visual to work with, essentially. So let's carry on. So if you didn't know how to open that and you're using VS Code, perhaps all you'd have to do is right click on here, copy the path. So the absolute path. And then in here, you just paste that. OK, so I could do that in WebStorm too. Great. So now let's do some styling, right? So let's do it. Here's my style sheet. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just say that everything I'm going to give this the font family of uh, Ubuntu, which we're going to have to get from the Google Fonts uh, web page. Ubuntu, let's make this a little bit bigger, condensed. And then as a backup, let's just have sans serif, why not? So now if I go to Google Fonts, search for Ubuntu, 
condense, that's the one we want. Let's go ahead and add it. So I'm gonna actually just pick how many of these. Okay, let's pick the 400. Oh, there's only 400, great. So we can do it two ways. We can put it in our HTML, but I'm gonna to choose to put it in our CSS using this, so using import. So just go ahead and copy that and then back in WebStorm. Just gonna paste it in like so. So I'm just gonna minimize this so you can see a little better. Great. So this is looking good. And if I now open this up in here and refresh, that font will be applied. So now let's, well, let's carry on styling. So what else I'm gonna do? So we want every the font to be applied to everything in the dock and we want the font to be white. So I can just write white or let's make it like an off white because white is a bit too jarring for me. And let's make the font size 35 pixels. Okay, so that's gonna be applied to everything now. And now in the body, well, the body, I just wanna center the actual div with the class of display. So I'm gonna give the whole body display flex, justify content center. So that will center it uh, in the middle of the page, but we also wanna center it from the top to bottom. So to do this, I'm actually gonna to have to assign a height, otherwise that will not work. I'm just gonna give it the uh, height of my viewport and then we use align items center, okay? So without giving it a height, this would not work, and this would not work, and this would not work without the display flex. Got it? Good, so you need all four to center something in the page. And now let's also give this a background color. I'm gonna go with RGB. This is a color that I picked out previously from the previous tutorial where we just did this in JavaScript with no API. Great. So now if we, once again, just have a look and refresh the page, amazing. So you will now see that this, the departures, the div with the class departures, it's centered in the page and the styling has been applied as well. Great. So let's carry on. So we've done the body. Now let's actually also just give some padding to the H1 element. So I'm just gonna do padding 10 pixels just like so and let's grab the div with the class of departure so dot is for class name and I'm just going to give it a background color that's a bit darker right because we're essentially trying to create something that looks like a board visually so that's what I'm doing and then let's just round off the corners using border radius I'm going to use 10 pixels for that and also give it a padding to space everything out from the everything that we're going to be putting inside of this, of this. Great, so there we go. And now if I wanna say that the table that lives inside the departures, the div with the class departures, uh, I mean, it's unlikely we're gonna put another table in on the uh, document, but you know, just if, if you didn't know how to do that, I'm picking out the element of table that lives inside the element with the class of departures, okay? And only this style and this style will only be applied to that element that lives inside the div with the class of departures. So let's give this a background color of a little bit lighter now. I'm gonna go 46, 46, 46. And let's make sure that all the text is aligned left, because at the moment it's centered. So if we have a look at what this looks like now. There we go. So our departures div, our div of the class of departures is this color, and then our table is this kind of lighter gray. Cool. Let's carry on. What else do we need to style? Well, I'm actually going to say, actually this should be fine for now. Let's carry on. So in my app now, I said that I want to start injecting stuff into my uh, my ta my table essentially from JavaScript. So that's what I'm gonna do. So once again, we're gonna use this API. So again, these are exp example responses. We're gonna get the destination, the status, the departing time, the gate, and we're essentially gonna feed it into here 
okay, as table rows, okay? And we're also gonna make them do this cool flipping animation if you saw my previous video on this where we make this in pure JavaScript. So let's do it. To do this first, I'm just gonna build a mini backend so in my file structure, you will see I just have three files. However, I think it might be nice to now put these three files in a folder called client so we can separate it out from the back end. And I'm just going to drag these three in here like so. So they are all now in the folder called client. And we're going to make another folder. Or we don't have to make, you can make another folder for the server, but as we're just having one file, I'm not going to, I'm just gonna call the file server.js, okay? So that shouldn't be in here, that should be on the same level as the folder client. So there we go, server, client, and it lives in the flight widget live project. Great. So here is where we're gonna be writing our backend. However, we need to do a few things. You need to have node installed. Okay, because we're going to have to use Node and we're also going to have to use uh, NPM. So if you haven't, please go ahead and visit here. So install Node. And just select which one you need. For me, it will be the Mac OS installer. So you're going to have to do that. And then also we're going to have to install NPM so that we can use it to install packages. Okay. So here we go, npm g install npm. This is for installing it globally, okay? So just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you how. So you just do that. I mean, that's it. Or if you're using uh, VS Code, you might wanna get your terminal up. Your terminal looks like this, okay? And it doesn't matter where you do it because it's global. So just go ahead and do that. Great. Now that we've done that, once again, I'm just going to show you how to do this uh, in your terminals. So you would go into wherever you stored this project. So for me, it's WebStorm projects. And then I go into flight widget live. And then you're going to have to do npm in it. Okay. So run that. I'm not going to do it here. I'm actually going to do it in here. So I would just do npm init, making sure that I'm in the flight widget live and hit enter. And then I'm just going to go through these and hit enter. Okay, the package name, correct. Version one, correct. Description, I'm going to leave blank. Entry point blank or server.js, sorry. Test command blank. Everything is just the default. And then is this okay? Yes. And that will generate a package JSON file for me. I'm going to watch it happen. I'm going to wait for that to happen. And there we go. Ta-da! So you'll see this file show up and this is what's in it. We're going to have to add some packages in here as well, as well as a script to start our backend. But first off, let's go ahead and store the packages that we need. They're express that will help us get uh, routes uh, with our routing. So to get uh, certain things as well as listen out to the port. We're also going to need Axios in order to make the request. We're going to need cause. We're going to need .env in order to hide our uh, rapid API key safely so we don't upload it onto GitHub or anything like that. And we're also going to need Nodemon to listen out to changes on the backend. So please go ahead and install that using npm i or npm install and hit enter. Okay. And that should populate in here with the versions that we're using for this tutorial. So if you're watching this in the future and something doesn't work, it could be down to the version you are using. So just remember that. Okay, so there we are. That's been populated with the versions. You know, you can just change these if you need to and then just run npmi again after saving that file. But of course, I'm not going to do that because this is the versions that I'm using and 0.6 probably doesn't exist yet, right? Cool. So those are the packages. Now let's write the code for our server. So the first thing that we're going to actually need to get uh, is the packages. But first off, no, sorry, we need to define the port. So I'm going to define the port as running on port 8000 on my local computer. Now let's start off actually with getting the code that we need, right? So this is the code we need in order to get this response. So again, I'm literally just going to copy all of this. I'm going to take it like super easy. 
I'm just gonna paste it in here, okay? So that is the code that we are going to need in order to get the flight data from Pearson's airport. So we're gonna have to wrap this in a uh, get root. So to do that, let's use express. So const express equals require the package express. Okay, and once we have that, we actually need to call Express to release all of its wonderfulness and save it as something else. I'm going to choose to save it as app so we can actually use it. Uh, and app use will also allow us, if I do app use, allow us to use cause so we're not blocked by cause. So we're going to call cause, but of course, we also need to install cause. So require cause. If you don't know much about cause, I do go into it in a few tutorials, so I'm not going to go into it now, but just know that if you get a message saying block by cause, it's probably because you haven't done this. And then, of course, we need the dot env package in order to hide our rapid API key. Great. I think that's it. Uh, Axios cause. So we'll just, I'm just going to move this up here, actually and our default. Great. So yeah, wonderful. Let's carry on. Now, just to check everything's running, I'm going to do app listen to listen out for changes on to listen out to the port. So I'm just going to pass through the port number and then write console log running on port and then the port number. Okay, I'm actually going to put that at the bottom. And now we're going to wrap this in an app get. So this is something, this is express routing. And if we visit localhost 8000 forward slash flight, so we're defining this ourselves, we could have just left it as, you know, localhost 8000 if we wanted to, but I think it's more readable to give it an actual path. And then we get the request and response. And then I'm literally just going to take all of this, all of that code that we copied from Rapid API and just put it in here. Okay. So that is what it looks like. Now let's also make a .env file on the same level as the server. So just in the root of my project, a file .env so that we can hide our rapid API key. So I'm just going to go ahead and define it here. Rapid API key. And then I'm just going to grab this, paste it in here. We don't need to say it's a string. That's kind of implied. And now that means that I can use process env and go into the env file. So, and then get the rapid API key. Okay. So I'm just going into that file. Great. So we're console logging the response data. We also want to actually show it in the browser. So to do this, I'm going to do res JSON and just pass through the response data as well. Wonderful. Now let's write a script so we can run this, right? So I'm going to say that if we write npm run start, oh, I feel like that's already been added for us. Do we do that? I don't think so. So that's quite cool. However, I'm going to do no demand. So it continuously listens out to changes. Okay. So no demand. Node will just listen at once, but no demand will continuously listen out to changes on the server.js file. Great. So now, like I said, if I run npm run start, this should, woo, it's running on port 8000. This also means that if I now visit localhost 8000 forward slash flights, you will see all the destination, all the departure flights for Pearson Airport. And there's a lot. So this is looking cool. I'm just going to say I want the first six, however, and we could do this on the server. And it's probably better to do it on the server, right? So. I'm just going to dot slice the first. I think that's fine. 
Great. So that's our super simple back end. Look, we can even like just put it all in. It might even all fit. Nearly. It nearly all fits. Uh, that's our super simple back end. Okay. Now we need to get this data and bring it to the front end. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So back to here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just pick out this element by the ID so we can start injecting the flights into it. So I'm going to define it as table body and I'm going to use document get element, not animations, get element by ID table body. Cool. And now I'm actually going to write, let's just do it in a function because I think it makes it more readable. Um, you can write function. I'm going to use a function expression though. So there's my get flight. And I'm going to use fetch to fetch literally this URL. So of course our backend needs to be running for this to work. We're going to get this and we're just going to fetch all of that JSON. So this means we need to do some chaining, right? So once we, so once that promise returns, then we're going to get the response, response from response JSON. And then whatever comes back as the JSON, we're going to save this as, I'm going to save it as flights. I'm choosing to call it flights. And I'm actually going to, for now, just console log flights so we can see what's going on, but we're going to pass this into a function, right? Because we need these to resolve before this happens. Hence, I'm going to pass it into a function, but I'll show you that later on. And then we're going to catch any errors. So catch error console log error. Cool. So now if I, of course, call this and then we go in here, to our flight widget, refresh. Ah, we moved this, didn't we? We moved this into client. There we go. So if I look in the console log now, we have to wait a bit. Ta-da! Okay, so that took a while and that could be problematic. So this is, well, again, I'll show you this later, but it's problematic, but we'll get over this, right? I'm going to show you how to uh, essentially make stuff happen once this is resolved and once we get the data back. So this is what we are working with, okay? Of course, the object doesn't really come back in the exact same shape as we would ideally like, like we did for the plain JavaScript tutorial where we made our own object, but don't worry, we can use this data to create our own objects too in the format that we want. But essentially, we've got all the information here. So this is looking great. So what I'm going to do now is get all of this data and pass it into a function to populate the table. OK, because once again, if we just, for example, if I just wrote a function here, populate table, then we wouldn't have the data and it would read the function populate table without the data. OK, and then nothing would work. So again, I'm just going to write if I um, function expression for this. You can just write function if you wish, but this is what I have chosen to do. So here we go. Here's my function populate table. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass through the flights into it, which means that here, once this is all once this is resolved, then I want to pass flights into populate table and call this function. Okay. So let's get rid of this console log. Cool. And what do I want to happen? Well, for each flight, so for each flight, I'm going to say that each object I just named flight of flights. So once again, I'm just going to show you because we have an array, right? It's an array of objects. So I've essentially called each object a flight now. So each object, so the, the whole array is flights. Each object is called flight. So for each object in the array, essentially, this is saying, what do I want to do? Well, I want to create, so document create element, and I want to create a table row. So let's say this is table row. 
And what else do I want to do? I actually want to create a table icon too. So as I said, I want a little icon of a um, airplane. <laughs> so create element, and I'm just going to create element table data because each row takes table data. Yeah. Okay. So once again, I'm just going to show you. Here's our table. Here's a table head. We're, we're going to create a table row and then we're going to create table data. Here it's called TH, but for the body, we're going to use TG. So we're going to have to create one, two, three, four, five, six table data. Cool. So I'm going to create a table icon for the first one. Uh, and so table icon text content, I'm going to give it this, like I said, the airplane. So just like that. And now we're going to essentially get the table icon and put it in the row. So we're going to get the table row and use append table icon. Okay, so we'll put the icon in the table row. And now we also need to put the table row in the table body. So table body append table row. So let's refresh that and wait for it to resolve. Ta-da! So there's our first uh, row, column, sorry. And we've put in a little airplane in it. Yay! Cool. However, I don't know why there's only one. There should have been a lot more. Let's check it out. So I'm just going to console log flights here to see what's going on. Okay. So yes, we are getting six items, but only one table row has been created. Why is that? Ah, it's because we didn't put this. We need to wrap that all in here. It needs to be in the loop. So now there should be more of the little icons. There we go. So we get six icons now. Okay. Cause we're looping over for every flight or every item that exists in our array. Great. So now that's working. Let's continue. So now for each flight, so for each, I guess, um, object, before we put this all in the table row, so up here, I'm going to redefine my object. So I'm going to redefine the flight details. So I'm literally going to make an object that is going to take the time, a destination, the flight, the gate, and then the remarks. Okay, so essentially we're just kind of trying to get something for these five columns. Okay, and from our data, well, we can see that we can get the flight departing. So the, we've called it flight, so the object's departing. Let's use that. It probably also slice it down, right? Just so we get the first five characters and then the destination. That's just destination. The flight is the flight number and the gate is gate and remarks is status. So let's see if we can remember that. Flight departing again, because we've called this object flight up here. Flight. Oh gosh, what was this flight details? Flight number, wasn't it? Flight number. This was flight gate. And this was flight status. And then we said we wanted departing. We said we just want to get the first five characters. So there we go. And let's make this to uppercase. And this also to uppercase, it's all capital. 
And this was in an array. So I'm guessing there's gonna be more than one, but we just want one. So I'm just gonna return the first value from that array using the shift method. Cool. And now, so we've redefined our new object. Let's now use that object to essentially create a table data cell for each of the items. So I'm gonna do so again. So const, I'm gonna call it flight detail. So each flight detail that exists in this object, in the flight details object. And for each item that exists, I'm gonna create a uh, table data cell. So document create element TD. I'm gonna save this as table cell. And now I'm going to essentially, so whatever these words are, I don't really want, I want them because I want each little, each word to be separated out. I wanna create an array from it so that we can create little flipping boards. I'm gonna get the word and create an array from it, like I said. So array from, and then we're gonna look in the flight details object and look for something by the flight detail. Okay, so essentially I'm just creating little arrays so that we can now create little cards for them. So const, um, we're gonna have to have the index this time. So index and then the letter for each of the cards of the word entries. Okay. Uh, so great. So now that we've got each word split out into an array so that we can create little boxes for them, I'm going to create a box for them. So document create element div. And let's call this a letter element. Great. So of course now we have that, we need to put that letter element into the table cell. So let's get the table cell and append the letter element. And we also need to, so after still in this for loop, we also need to grab the table row and append the table. So, okay, so of course we won't really be able to see the styling on this now, but I'm just gonna show you what this looks like. I'm trying not to make as many calls because it's obviously taking time to make the call and we don't wanna go over the certain amount either. So, hmm. we've created the table data and for each letter we've created a div. So that's looking good. We just need to actually put the letter in. So let's actually get the letter element and use text content to add the letter, okay? So for each word entry, I'm just gonna do that. Great. And maybe let's style up the div a little bit. So in here, in the departures table, any div that lives inside of it, I'm going to give it a border that is solid, four pixels, one GB. Okay, so I'm just making little cards and let's also give it a background color of black, but let's make it RGB. RGB zero 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 and then min width of the card is going to be 20 pixels and the height is going to be 40 pixels and I'm going to make everything float left okay so once again let's check it out and refresh and let's wait for the API to do its thing we're calling the API Ta-da! So there we go.
this is looking good. As you can see, what we have done is got each word, we split it out onto an array from each item in the array, we made each letter go into a little card that we created or a div to be precise. So this is looking cool. The last thing I'm gonna do is just add a flip thing. So then we get it, everything flips over. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do this, I'm actually going to put, adding the letter in a set timeout. So set timeout, and then just put in a callback function. And then this set timeout. This is why I need the index, because if I did 100, then all the letters would flip after 100 milliseconds. But if I in multiply this by an index, the first one, will flip over at zero, the second one will flip over 100 milliseconds, the third one will flip over at 300 milliseconds, and so on. So that is how you would do it. And then I just want to show the letter, okay? So it's going to be like doo -doo -doo -doo, one after the other. I'm also actually going to get the letter element and assign it a class, which we're going to make. So class list add, this is how you add a class using JavaScript, and that class is going to be called flip. And actually also, yeah, I actually want to, let's put in that letter element in here too. So it actually gets put in at the same time. I think that would work better. Cool. So now in here, let's write the flip class. So I'm just going to do, dot flip and when the div is applied this class I'm going to animate it so I'm going to use animation uh, 0 0.5 seconds linear and then we're going to have to write the animation which I've called flipping so keyframes flipping is what we called it and I'm just going to transform it to rotate x 0 degrees and then I'm actually just going to copy this because we're just going to change a few things. So then at 50, it's going to rotate X 90 and then back to zero at 100. Great. So I'm pretty sure that's it. Why is it not liking that? Hmm. Oh, well, okay. So now let's check it out. Doo, 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 doo. We should probably hard code this table a little bit as well so that it doesn't look like this at any point in time. And ta-da! That is looking so cool. So yes, let's do a few final styling things and that is just going to hard code some of these elements. I'm going to say that the div with the ID of time, or sorry, the the element, I'm going to say that the element with the AD of time, so whatever holds our headings, always going to have a width of 160 pixels. Then the element with the ID of destination is going to have a width of 700 pixels. And flight is going to have 205 pixels. Gate is going to have a width of 135 pixels. And finally, Remarks is going to have a width of 260 pixels. Okay, so now the width will not change. It looked like this when it's empty. And then, whoosh! So that is looking. You can, of course, hard code the height as well. That part is totally up to you. Great. So thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson in how to take a simple JavaScript project and populate it using an API. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. So let's do it. Let's get up our code editors. 
So I am using WebStorm, so I'm just going to spin up a React app fast by clicking on React right here. And then this means I could just call this whatever I want. I'm going to call this React Flight Widget, just like so. And it's going to use the command npx create react app to spin up a React app for me, along with all of its boilerplate code. So I'm just going to go ahead and click create and let that do its thing. OK. So that's going to spin up all the files and directories for me. If you're not using WebStorm and you'd like to just use the terminal to do this, just go ahead and select a directory of your choice. So for example, I could use development and then I'd use the command npx create react app and then I'd call the project whatever I wish. But as you know, I'm not doing this way. I'm using WebStorm, which is kind of doing all of that for me. OK, so we're just going to wait until all the files and directories get populated in my project. At the moment, there is a package JSON and that's it. There's going to be a lot more. So while that's doing its thing, let's head over to Datastax, which is going to be the database management system I am using for this project. I'm using it because it's free and I use it in most of my projects. so I'm pretty used to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. Go ahead and sign up if you haven't already. And once you have signed up, you'll be taken to the Datastax Astra dashboard, just like so. And as you can see here, I have many databases already. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. And that will take me to this dashboard where I'm going to call my database something. Well, I'm just going to call it, let's call this the flight widget project and the key space name for this. I'm going to choose to call this flights just like so. OK, great. So that is what I've chosen to call my key space. Next, I'm going to choose a region. I'm going to choose the closest one to me, which at the moment I forgot where I am. I'm in London, so I'm going to go ahead and choose Europe, West Europe and create a database. OK, great. And now while our app is spinning up, this should be created. It will show you the token and secret client. Please go ahead and save that. I'm going to show you mine because I'm going to be deleting this anyway by the time this tutorial comes out. So this is what you should look like. Just copy that and keep it somewhere safe. OK, so go ahead and save it somewhere. I'm going to save mine on notes and wonderful. So now we can go to the database. That data will be needed to communicate with your database later on. So now that we are here, we can see our key space called flights, but we have to wait as our status is initializing. So we can't use this quite yet. So while that's doing its thing, let's go and check on our project. So back in here, you will see that in my directory called React Flight Widget, we will see all these files and directories. OK, so that's been generated for us. Let's just get rid of that for now. I'm actually going to get rid of a lot of these as we don't need them. So I'm going to delete these three. OK, I'm just going to really scale it back. Delete these three files, delete anyway. And then I'm going to delete the test file as we're not going to be doing any tests in this project. And then the, delete the app CSS file as we're just going to be storing all our CSS in one place. OK which means that now in the index.js file, I can get rid of this as we're not reporting web vitals. So get rid of the import for it. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. And then we can keep all of these. I'm just going to get rid of the semicolons and great. So that is what your index.js file should look like in a stripped down version. Next, let's have a look at the app.js file. So once again, let's just change a few things. I'm not going to be using semicolons and I'm just going to get rid of all of this. OK, all of this in the return so we can start fresh. And I'm going to change this to a function expression just because I prefer working with them. Great. And for now, I'm just going to return an empty element. We don't need to import the app CSS file. As I said, we will be doing all our CSS in one. So that is the content of my app.js file. That is the content of my index.js file. And this is the content of my index.css file, which again, I'm just going to delete so we can start fresh. Great. Everything else just leave as it is. 
So now that we have done that, the first thing I'm actually going to do is just create a server. So at the moment, this is all in my directory called React Flight Widget. And we have the source directory right here. I'm just going to make a new file in the root of my project. So new file, it's going to be a JavaScript file called server.js. And here's essentially where all of my backend code is going to go. Okay, so just one file, I call it server, just to make it really clear that this is our backend. And all of this is going to be our front end. Okay, so everything in here. And they're going to share a package JSON file. Great. So what are we going to do here? Well, we are going to have to communicate with our database in this file. So to do this, I'm going to have to define a port. I'm going to say I want this to run on port 8000. We're also going to have to get Axios. So const Axios equals require the package Axios. Okay, so that is something that I'm going to have to install. We're also going to get the package express. So require express and the package cause so that we can get rid of those pesky cause messages, which I will show you. And then we're going to also need the .env package so that we can read information from a .env file in which we're going to store our API key. So I hope you already know what all these packages are, as I'm not going to go too much into them. The Axios package is essentially going to help us make get requests because we're going to get the data from our database and express is what's going to help us do the routing. OK, cause, as I said, is going to help us when we see the pesky cause message, which I will show you later. And the .env file, as I said, is going to help us get information from the .env file that we will create to store our API key. So let's go ahead and install all of these. So just make sure that you're in the right directory, which I am. And I'm going to use the command npm i for install to install the Axios package, the Express package, the Cause package, and the .env package, just like so. I'm also going to install the Nodemon, which will help us listen out to constant changes on the server.js file. So just go ahead and install those. So hit Enter and let that do its thing. OK, and great. So now if we look in the package JSON file, you will see those packages right here. OK, so there we go. If you are doing this in the future and something doesn't work, it could be down to the package you are using. So just make sure to change the package and then run npm i to reinstall all those packages again after you save the file. However, we're not going to do that now. So let's just put it back to the packages that we install. So these are the latest ones right now in time. OK, so let's carry on. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you to see. Now, we're going to also have to add another script because at the moment we have a script to start, you know, the, just the React app. I'm going to write another script, which I'm going to call start backend. So that's how we're going to call the script to start our backend. And I'm going to change this to front end, actually. And here I'm going to listen out to changes on the server.js file. And to listen out constantly for changes, I'm going to use Nodemon, which I just installed. OK, so that will listen out to constant changes on my server.js file. Great. So I'm not going to run this yet. Let's just get rid of that for now. Let's carry on writing our code for here. So first off, I'm going to actually get everything that Express comes with and release all of its magic wonderfulness. And to do this, well, I've stored it under the const express, which means if I grab express now and call it, all of that will be released. So everything that comes with the express package. So to use it, I'm actually going to save it as another const called app, which means that now I can use app and use any methods that come with express. And one of those is listen. And that's going to help us listen out to the port. OK, and it's going to listen out to the port and it's going to console log out running on port and then we're just going to grab the port name okay so that now if i do npm run start backend and hit enter 
you will see running on port 8000 and if i make any changes here and save obviously that won't work because that has um that's not code let's comment that out it will rerun okay so that's constantly listening out for changes great now let's check what our database is doing so as you will see here it is it is online this is great so this is looking good we can now use it so what I'm going to do is add data into this manually, and that's going to be our flight widget data. So we're pretending we're an airline, essentially, okay? Do, 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 I've come in, here's my airline data. Of course, realistically, the database would hold data that someone is constantly updating, but we're just going to put it in once and leave it, okay? Because it's for the project, but you should know how to do this, so I'm going to show you how. So here is our database. I'm going to connect... And there's many ways we can connect. However, this time I'm just going to use the document API and I'm going to use the Swagger UI documents to help me visualize this. OK, so all I've done is click on here and that's launched the Swagger UI. Now we've created a key space. Now, first off with key spaces, we need to create a collection that will hold all our data. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a new collection in a key space name and try it out. Now, this has been auto-populated for us, so thanks very much, Datastax. And the key space, otherwise known as name ID in here, as we know, is called flight, as that's what we called it. And the collection that we're going to create, you can call it whatever we wish. I'm going to choose to call it departures. Okay, so that's going to be our flights departures. So my collection is called departures. And now if I execute this, you will see that that has worked. We got a 201 response. So great, that's looking good. We've made a collection. Now let's put stuff into our collection. So what I'm gonna do is create a new document this time and try this out. The key space name, otherwise known as the name ID in here, or the name space ID is called flights and the collection is called departures as we just made it. And in here, well, I'm gonna go ahead and just create an object that's going to represent one departure. Now I've already pre-made this for us so we don't have to sit here all day writing them out. So this is what my object's going to look like. Okay, as you can see here, we have the status of delayed for this flight. The destination is Halifax, Canada. The flight number is Y9521 and it's departing at 4 p.m. And we've also got the gate number. Okay. So there we go. That's what one object is going to look like. And now if I execute this, ta-da, we get a 201 response. That object essentially has been put into my departures collection and that is its document ID. If we ever need to pick it up by document ID. I'm just going to go ahead and put in some more. Okay, so once again, I have pre-made these just to make our lives a little bit easier. So there's another flight. I'm just going to execute that and let that do its thing. And that has been put in because we can see the document ID in the response body. Let's put in another one. Okay, so this flight is on time because the other two have been delayed. I'm just going to put in a few more to check that one has worked and it has. This is a cancelled flight to Oman. I'm going to execute that. And then we have one more and it's to Krakow, Poland. Okay, so there we go. Great, and we're just gonna execute that, and wonderful. So now, if we search all the documents in a collection, let's try this out. The key space name is flights, otherwise known as the namespace name in Swagger. The collection is called departures, and I'm just going to get back everything, okay? We could limit how many items we wanna get back, but I don't wanna do that, I just want everything, and wonderful. So there we go. Okay. At the moment, it's just returning three. However, if I view this, so if I actually get this URL, okay, this one right here, that's essentially what we created by entering all these details. That is the URL. And this is what we're also going to have to pass through with that, except application JSON and the Cassandra token. So that's what essentially what we're going to recreate in our backend. 
So let's get up our web store. Now I'm going to use app again, which holds all of our express wonderfulness, and I'm going to use the get method. Let's make this a little bit bigger, and we don't need that. And what I'm going to do is get, and I'm going to define a route. I'm going to say that if we visit localhost 8000 forward slash flights, then we want to essentially see the data from our database. So this is the syntax for doing a get request in Express. And then I'm going to have to essentially get pass through some options. OK, so the options are what we saw. The method is going to be get, even though I don't think we need to specify that if we're doing it up here. So let's not worry about that. The URL for this is going to be the URL that I stole from Swagger, which we can hide as well, but I'm just going to keep it like this for now. And then the headers. Well, the headers are going to be these two. OK, so we've got accept application JSON. And then we're also going to have make it like this x cassandra token you can sure to spell it exactly the same way as it's spelt here and we're going to use our own token that we saved so there we go that's my one that we saw earlier and now under the headers and under the options, so that's our options, all of that, I'm going to use Axios, which is the package that we installed up here to request options, then get the response. And once we get that response, well, for now, I'm just going to console log the response data. But we also want to see it in the browser. And for that, I need to use ResJSON and pass through the response data like so. And then, of course, we're going to catch any errors. So catch error, just like so. I'm just going to console log the error. OK, great. So I think that should be it. That is our whole piece of code. So now. If we look on localhost 8000 forward slash flights, ta-da, we get that data showing up so we can use it. Now, if we wanted to limit or say that, you know, we want to get all six, then I can actually say that I want six. I can really hard code it to only get six back. So I'm going to do page size six and then you'll see all six of those flights. So let's go ahead and add that to the URL. Right here. OK, great. Now, at this point, I'm actually going to create a .env file, so new file .env. So we can store all of this as this is kind of sensitive. Even the URL is sensitive, right? So I'm going to essentially get this whole URL, all of it, including the page size, or we can actually leave the page size. Maybe let's leave it. Let's just get this URL and save it here. And I'm going to say this is URL just like so. OK, we don't need to put strings as it's implied that it's a string and save this. And I'm also going to get the token and save this token right here so that it's hidden from when we push this up to GitHub and so on. So let's get all of that and paste it in here like so, OK? So there's my URL. It ends in forward slash departures. And there's my Cassandra token. Great. So now to access these, we can simply just use process env and then token, OK? Process env is essentially a way for us to access anything in the .env file. And token is what we called our token. And we can do the same for the URL here. In fact, I'm going to use backticks because I'm going to pass the URL in like this. So process env 
URL. And then I'm going to also attach this string at the end, just so it's visible to whoever's looking at this in case they're wondering why all their data isn't coming back. It's because we capped it at six. Great. So amazing. We've essentially finished our back end. How painless was that? Mm -hmm. So now that we have that, let's get to using all of this data that we have here by building out a front end. So let's do it. So to do this, I'm going to actually get out my terminal again and create a new tab and run the command npm run start front end this time, making sure to spell it correctly and making sure that you're in the correct directory and hit enter. So that will spin up our front end, okay, right here. It should have nothing in it because I deleted everything in it. So it should just be a blank page, okay? And it is great. So that is working well. I think we are done with the database for now. So I'm just going to get rid of that and great. Now, the first thing we wanna do, I'm actually gonna get rid of the server too. Uh, and let's just get our app. Let's have a think about the components that are gonna make up this app. Well, we're of course gonna have a table. We're also gonna have the table body as well as the table header. And the table body is gonna hold all our flight details and the table header is gonna hold information about the column names. We're also gonna have table rows that make up our table body, okay, as they can easily be components as they are reusable, as well as table cells, which will make up each cell that holds the names of things in our table. Okay, so let's go ahead and start doing that now. So, all I'm gonna do is create a new directory called components, this time components. And in here, I'm actually gonna use this as a template. I'm going to create a new file. It's gonna be a JavaScript file and it's gonna be for our table. And I'm gonna store this as a table JSX file. Okay, and then just paste it in like so. And I'm just gonna change this to be table, export default table. Great. In fact, we should probably change this to a JSX file as well as it includes uh, JSX. So let's just go ahead and rename this app JSX and this one as well, rename index.jsx. Great. So we've got our table. Next, we're going to have a table body. So new file table body.jsx. And then I'm just gonna add body here and here. Okay, so we've got table body now. We're also gonna have table head. So new file table head dot JSX, add that file, table head and table head. Now we're also gonna have a table row, right? So new file table row dot JSX. Let's put don't ask again. And then this is gonna be changed to table row. I'm not forgetting to changing it here at the bottom too. And one more, and that's gonna be a table cell. So table cell.jsx and change this to table cell and change this to table cell too. Great. So let's just get rid of these at the moment. Okay, so what I know is that I'm gonna have a div here and this div, I essentially want to hold all of my departures information together, which means I want to put in the table along with a header that says departures. Okay, so I'm gonna put in a header element and it's just gonna say departures like so. Perhaps let's make it capital to make it consistent with the previous ones that I made. And I'm also gonna use the table component now okay, that I have made. So just like that, which means you need to import it in here. So import table from, and then I'm gonna go into the components and I'm gonna grab the table component. 
just like so. So at the moment, this won't really do much, okay? I'm gonna actually style this up. I'm gonna give this the class name of departures just so we can center the departures header and the table, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna grab this and then the .css file, I'm going to grab the class of departures, so dot for class name. And I'm just going to give this a background color so we can see a little bit of what's going on. And I'm just going to make it this dark gray. I'm going to give it a border radius to soften it up of 10 pixels. And I'm also going to give it some padding, to space it out from the header and the table. And I'm also going to give it a box shadow, which I pre-made before. So it's going to have this dark gray color with a 0 0.25 alpha for opacity. And I want it to be zero on the x-axis, 13 pixels on the y-axis, 27 pixels blur, and five pixels spread. Okay, and then I'm gonna overlay it with another one. Oops, there we go. And that's RGBA. This time it's black with 0 0.3 opacity. I'm just gonna put this on another line maybe. And zero pixels, x-axis, eight pixels, y-axis, 16 pixels blur, and minus eight pixels spread. Great. We don't need the px and the zero as it's redundant. So we've done that, and now if we look in the browser, oops, maybe we should have just kept that as it is, unless we can change something in the package JSON. Maybe that's, I think we're just overcomplicating it. Maybe let's try reading the run this. So npm run start front end. And there we go. Okay, so that's fine. We just have to rerun it as we renamed this file to a JSX file. Okay. So now you will see the div with the class name of departures. If I inspect this, you will see that in the root okay so there we go there's the div of the class departures and in it, it's got a header which says departures and it should have the table component but at the moment that's returning nothing so that's all we'll see let's go ahead and change the font as well so actually what i'm also going to do is say that all so all the fonts that i'm going to use are going to have the color of an off-white so rgb 240 240 240 just like so I'm going to use the font family of Ubuntu Condensed, which I'm actually going to get from Google Fonts API, so Condensed. And then as a backup, I'm going to have Sans Serif and Arial. Okay, great. I'm also going to make the font size for everything 35 pixels. So now if we look in here, there we go, we get the departures. Let's go ahead and also get the Google Font API so we can install Ubuntu. So here we go, fonts, Ubuntu. And we're just going to select the regular one. And then we're just going to import it. So I'm just going to grab this like so and paste it in. Okay, so there we go. We've just imported the Ubuntu condensed and we can now use it in the font family. So great. There we go. You will see that font has changed. Wonderful. Let's carry on. So now that we have that, I'm also going to center the departures. So what I'm going to do is grab the whole body of my document and use display flex on it. And first of all, I'm going to center everything horizontally. And then I'm going to give the body a height of 100 viewport height, uh, which will be in that I can now align items on the adjacent accent to this. So essentially, vertically, and I'm going to assign them center. Let's also give the body a background color. I'm going to choose to give it this orangey-like color, just 
like so. Okay, so there we go. We have centered the div with a class of departures. Great. Now let's go ahead and work on the table element. So I'm going to go ahead and get it up here. Now, the table element isn't really going to have much in it. It's just going to say that I want this to be a table, right? So I've got the table element. And then we're going to have to have a table head, right? But I'm going to choose to put this in its own component. So there we go. We've already made the table head component here. And we also need the table body because, as we said, we want the table body to hold all of our data about the flights. So let's go ahead and import those two components that we made. So import table head from table head and also import table body from table body. Great. And once again, that's all we're going to do on the table. Let's work on the table head first. So what do I want the table head to return? Well, I'm going to use the table head element and it's closing tag to create a table head. And inside of here, I'm going to have to create a table row. So there's our table row. Note that it's separate to the table row we have here because this one's specifically for the body. The table head is going to have a table row which is going to contain a table header with the first one being empty and the second one is going to be a column title of time. The next one we're going to have destination. So it's going to be the column head of our destination column. Destin destination. Next we're going to have a column head for our flights. Then we're going to have one for the gate. And then finally, we're going to have one for remarks. Okay, remarks. And I'm going to actually pick each one of these out by its ID because I'm going to give it a custom sizing. So that one's going to be time. This one, I'm going to give it the ID of destination. Oh, no. Destination. Let's give this one the ID of, well, you guessed it, flight. This one the ID of gate. And this one the ID of remarks. Okay? So at the moment, this will just like this. But as I said, I want to space them all out a little bit. So perhaps let's go ahead and do that now. So. First off, maybe let's also just give this some padding. So let's pick out the header. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Pick out the header and give it a padding of 10 pixels just to space it out from everything else. And now, in the departures, the table itself that we created, I want that to be a different background color, actually. I want it to be this lighter gray that I picked out earlier. And I want all the text to align to the left. So let's have a look at what that looks like at the moment. There we go. You will see this is my table. Okay. You will see it's got a lighter gray background. Now let's actually get to picking out all of the column names. So we're going to get the flight and I'm going to hard coat the width of this column to be 160 pixels. Next, we're going to get the destination. And I'm also going to hard code this to have a width of 700 pixels this time. Then we're going to get the time. In fact, this one, the first one's time, isn't it? The second one is flight. Uh, and this is going to have a width of 205 pixels. Then we have the gate. This is going to be a short one. So grab the gate ID and then just give it a width of 135 pixels and then remarks it's going to have a width of 260 pixels okay so that should have spaced them all out a little bit great so i believe we are done with the table header let's move on to the table body next and populating it with our data so Let's go back to here. I'm going to get rid of this. We're done with this for now. And let's get the table body. 
So the table body, well, we already know that this should return the T body element, because that is how we make tables. So T body. And what we're going to have to do is map stuff onto table rows. So this is the ideal place for us to essentially get the data from our backend. So that's what we're going to do. And for this, we're going to have to import use state and use effect from React, okay? Because we're going to essentially get the data. So let's actually write a function for this called get flights, just like so. And I'm gonna use fetch from JavaScript in order to fetch data from here. So I'm just gonna grab this URL, it really is that simple, and I'm gonna paste it like so. And then I'm gonna do some chaining. So once we get the response, response I want to get its JSON then I'm going to get the let's call it flights not data flights and I'm going to set flights so let's go ahead and use const flights set flights use state and start off with the state being null. So what this essentially is, if you haven't really come across that much React before, is I am saying that I want to set the flights with whatever I pass through into here, which is going to be flights, okay? Because the flights are whatever's coming back from our JSON. So essentially all of this is our flights. And I'm passing it through into set flights which is then going to pass that on to the variable or the constant of flights. Okay, so that is how to use use state. And we're starting off with flights being null. So if I console log flights after fetching the data, let's see what happens. We of course need to catch any errors as well. So catch error console log error. Great. So this is looking good. However, we also need to put this in a use effect. So all I'm going to do is put get flights in a use effect like so and not pass through any dependencies. So let's see what happens now. Let's go to here and console. And there we go. We get that pesky, pesky cause message. It's been blocked by cause. So what I can do is go to my server and use app again, so app use password cause and call it. Okay, so that is how you would get rid of this pesky message. So let's refresh and great. So this is why we have to use use effect because the first time we get the data, there's null, nothing. And the third time we get it, the data is there. Okay, so there's all our flight data. Okay, so there's one object with its document ID there's another object with its document ID and so on and so on. Okay, so once again, that is why we have the use effect here so that we can keep running this until we get our data, right? Because it came back as null, null, and then we got it. Wonderful. So now that we have our data, let's use it to populate some table rows. So let's do it. So this is obviously coming back in this format as data. So perhaps we can actually get the flights data and see what that looks like. So now this is our object. Our object comes back with lots of other little objects, of course. So perhaps we need to format this. We want this to be an array essentially. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have to get the object values, I think, and turn them into an array. So how would I do this? Well, let's check it out. So perhaps let's wrap this in object values so we can get the values. Okay, and there we go. So yes, all I've done is look at this object and say I don't want the uh, key, I want the value instead and stick that in an array for me. And that's what happened. Okay, great. So now I have an array of five objects. Wonderful. 
So now that we have flights, like I said, what I want to do is map them. So if flights exist, I want to map, because as we know at the beginning, it returned back null, right? So if flights exist, I want to map that onto, so let's get the flight. Actually, we need the index too, so the flight and the index, because we need a key. And I essentially want to map them onto the table row component that we made. And we're going to have a key for that as that is necessary. And we're just going to pass through the flight. So each flight. Okay. Wonderful. So that is all I am doing. I'm getting the array and for each item in the array, I'm passing it through into the table row element. So now let's start the table row element, which of course we need to also import into here. So let's go ahead and do that. Import table row from table row. It's going to make it single quotes to make everything consistent. Wonderful. So let's get the table row. And here we go. So for now, if I just console log the flight, which we are destructuring, okay, we've destructured that prop. So I'm just going to console log the flight now and look in here. We will get each individual flight coming back. Okay, so this is good. Let's work with that. So for each flight, well, I actually don't need to do much. Um, I need to just, well, I could just make a table cell and then pass through each item of these, each value into a table cell. So perhaps, no, let's do that. Okay, so return back. Well, actually with the table row, let's get the table row element. This is going to be made up of table data. So let's get the table data and we're going to have six of these with the first one actually being this cute little airplane icon that I found. So feel free to take that from my code if you wish. And then for each of the five remaining table data elements, we're going to have to, well, you guessed it, map out each of these. Okay, so this is going to go on one table cell, this is going to go on one table cell, this is going to go on one table cell. So let's import the table cell. Import table cell from table cell. Want to get the, I guess, words and we'll use object values again to get the values, the object values of each flight. So just the ones in light green. So I'm going to pass through the flight in here. Let's just console log what this looks like so we can see. Let's have a look. Okay, and great. As you will see, an array of all the object values has been made for us. So now we can work with this array to map them out onto table cells. So let's get the words. So words, and if words exist, I want to map out each word onto the table cell. Of course, we're going to have to have a key. So I'm going to actually add an index to this as well. So index, the index as a key. And in fact, I'm just going to put this on another line. There we go. And the table cell is going to have the key, but it's also going to have the word itself, right? So there we go. Great. So that's what we're passing through. Okay, cool. So now on the table cell, we're going to destructure the word. And we can just return it. I'm going to show you what this looks like if we just return the word. Of course, this needs to be in a table data element. And let's have a look at what this looks like. It will look like this. So this essentially looks good. However, we want to give it that flip 
effect, right? Which means we have to take this a step further and for each word, I want to split it out by letter, okay? And then I want to apply a timing effect to it. So let's go ahead and do that next. So what I'm going to do is, well, I am going to, instead of just putting the word in here, I'm going to essentially make an array from the word like so, and then I'm going to map each letter. So let's get the letter and I'm also going to use the index as a key. And what I'm going to do, let's just maybe get rid of this now. is make a div this time and I'm going to give it the class name of, well, the class name is going to depend because I want to add this class name after X amount of seconds has passed, right? So, and I'm also going to pass through the letter. So at the moment, if I look in here, oops, let's just get rid of this for now. The letters are coming through. Let's actually maybe just start this up a little bit so they don't look like this. Let's get up our index CSS and let's grab our departures, grab our table that lives inside of that and grab the div, so the div that I just created and give each one a border of solid four pixels and then the gray color. So just like that, I'm going to give it a border. I'm also going to give each one a background color of black, essentially. So let's do that by RGB, zero, zero, zero. I'm also going to give each one a min width of 20 pixels and a height of 40 pixels. So each letter is the same. I'm going to make each one float left as well. So now if we look in here, that's more like it. Okay, and then let's just make this a little bit smaller for now. So there we go. There we have our little letters and of course we want to flip them next. So let's go ahead and do that. For this, I'm going to have to write an animation. Okay, so I'm going to create a class. So dot class called flip and I'm going to make this an animation. So animation uh, and I want to last I want the animation to last 0.5 seconds. I want it to be smooth, so I'm going to add linear and I'm going to define the keyframes of flipping. So at keyframes, flipping. And all I'm going to say is at the beginning of my 0.5 second animation, I want to transform, rotate on the X axis, start at zero degrees and then 50% through my 0.5 second animation, I want to transform and rotate X and I want it to be to 90 degrees. And then on 100%, I want to transform and just put it back to zero degrees. Okay, so if I add the class of flip to something, essentially we'll kick off this animation. So this means that here, I essentially want to add the class of flip, but add it to each letter after X amount of time has passed. And for this, I'm going to have to use a set timeout. So I'm actually going to import use state for this so we can save the flip state for each of the letters. So import use state from React. And I'm going to say const flip set flip. And then we're going to start off with the flip being false for each div. Okay. None of the divs have the class of flip. However, I'm going to use set timeout now. Set timeout. And I want this set timeout to occur after 100 milliseconds, multiply by whatever index we are looping over for each word, okay? Which means that we need to go back into the table row and actually pass through the index into here too. So the index of each word, so index, so I'm going to actually use the index now, so like so. 
So on the table cell, I'm going to also pass through the index and we're going to use it to multiply to 100 milliseconds in order to perform this set timeout after different time intervals. And what do I want to have in this set timeout? Well, I just want to set flip to be true. Okay, so I'm setting flip to be true by using set flip. It starts off with being false, but then I set it to true. So now I can use flip in order to select a class name. So I can say that if flip is true, I want to add the class of flip. Otherwise, no, there's no class name. Okay, and actually same for the letter, same for displaying the letter. If flip exists, then I want to show the letter. Otherwise, I don't. Okay, I just want to show an empty string. Or we can just put no. Great. So if we have a look now at what this looks like, ta-da! Wonderful. So that is how it looks. We are essentially flipping out each word. We can, of course, take this a step further and actually flip out each letter. So shall we do that? Yeah, let's go ahead. So instead of just creating this div here, I'm going to pass it through into another component. So let's go ahead and create a new file. Uh, let's call this letter, table letter, just to keep everything consistent, JSX. So now let's do const table letter, just like so, and export default table letter. Okay, table letter. And we know we already need to pass through some things and we're gonna return, well, we can actually just return this, right? So I'm gonna get all of this and put this as the return of the table letter. And then also this set timeout doesn't want, we don't want it to happen here. So let's grab all of that and put it in here, which also means we need to import use state, which has been done for us. Great. So now we just need to map onto the table letter, just like so. And for each word, we're gonna pass through the letter as well as the index, right? So we're gonna use the index. We're also gonna to have to give this a key. So I'm just gonna put this on a new line so it's more readable. And of course, we're gonna to have to get up some parentheses and let's just put in a key for good measure and that'll be the index, which actually means we don't need to pass this through into the table cell anymore from the table row. So let's get rid of that here and let's get rid of that here. I'm just going to do that again. Okay, because we're not using it. So now on the table letter is where the flipping happens. So that means that on the table cell, we're passing through the letter and the index. Let's also go ahead and import table letter here from table letter. And on the table letter, we're gonna pass through the word and the index which were they going to use to flip our, sorry, letter and index. Yeah, with the letter and index. So which then we're going to use the index to flip each letter, which we have passed through into here. So now if we save this file, there we go. Now each letter is rotating individually. Okay, so we've just taken that a step further. And there we go. We have essentially finished our widget okay we've made it in react with a database i hope you've enjoyed this lesson and if you found this a little bit difficult please watch my video where i make this in pure javascript and another video where i make this in javascript using an api so there's three videos for you all different all giving you the same result but with different frameworks and approaches thanks very much and i'll see you again soon